This is a model of your spine and pelvis from the front. Your pelvis is a big ring comprised of two bones that join together in your pubic bone in the front and your SI joint in the back. This big ring has the capacity to torsion left and right slightly. If it moves too much, you can start to get in trouble or if it doesn't move at all, you can start to get in trouble. This is where your gluteus maximus, or the bigger part of your butt, sits. If you take that off and look underneath, there's a number of deep hip rotator muscles that attach from your pelvis to your hip. These will affect the flexibility and mobility of your hip joint, as well as the alignment of your pelvis. If you get an imbalance from left to right in the mobility of your hip, it can affect the alignment of your pelvis. Your pelvis is the base that your lumbar spine sits on, so if it's sitting under a torsion, it can create a very strong compressive force on your low back. This is a muscle chart of your low back and hips. Your gluteus maximus, or the bigger part of your butt, covers most of the back area. If you take that off and look underneath, you will see the deep hip rotator muscles that attach from your hip to your pelvis. These muscles are prone to holding a lot of tension, especially if a person has a postural issue where they don't use their glutes well. Commonly there is a difference in the tension of these muscles between the left and right side, which results in a relative tension force on the pelvis. If the imbalance is significant, the person may feel like one leg is longer than the other, or just feel like something is out of whack. Either way, you can usually see it when you lay flat on your back and place the outside of your ankle just above the opposite knee. When you relax your leg in this position, your knee should fall downward towards the bed. If one side is a lot stiffer than the other, it usually means you have a muscle imbalance and an alignment issue with your pelvis. Your pelvis is the base that your spine sits on, so if it is torsioned, it will typically create a compressive force on your low back with associated muscle spasm. In chronic issues, it can become a vicious cycle of your back irritating your hips and your hips irritating your back. The nerve roots that come out of your low back are the electrical wiring for most of the muscles around your hips and legs. So when your back gets annoyed, the hips get tighter, and when the hips get tighter, the back gets more compressed and the cycle can continue. A good example is your sciatic nerve. It is comprised of the nerve roots from your low back that join together to run down through your deep hip muscles and the back of your leg. Excessive tension in the, dip, in the deep hip can irritate this nerve and create tightness and pain both in your low back and the back of your leg. Joint compression due to postural issues is the most common cause of low back pain. The spine is built to deal with the vertical load of gravity quite well, but we tend to over compress the joints of our low back and pelvis by not knowing how to stand, sit, and walk properly. The facet joints are the ones that allow us to bend forward and backward. They are built for movement and not supposed to take a lot of load. Over compression of these joints can lead to chronic tightness and pain in your low back. Our SI joints function to transfer load from our spine to our pelvis and hips. Poor posture and hip tension can over compress these joints and lead to low back and hip pain. There are a lot of ligaments and connective tissue in your low back and spine, and you can sprain portions of this just like you can sprain your ankle. There just happens to be a lot more muscle that can seize up in your back and hips than there is in your ankle. 
Sprained ligaments typically take about four to six weeks to heal properly, but the muscle spasm can continue at a low grade indefinitely unless taken care of properly. Muscle imbalances and poor movement patterns can lead to way too much flexing, twisting, and shear force at one joint in your spine. The result can be a bulging of the jelly-like disc material and a compression of one or more nerve roots, causing extreme low back pain and leg pain. Watch the video titled Disc Herniations for more detail. Over time, the discs in your low back can start to thin, and the bones of your spine can start to develop some arthritic change. The extent of this t depends on both your age and how nice you've been to your spine over those years. This process functionally makes the holes where your nerves pass through from your spine narrower and can create local and referred pain. It tends to make a person have difficulty standing very erect and upright while walking, and make bending forward a very relieving position. The key to getting rid of low back pain is to first release the tension from the muscles creating the imbalance and the pain generation. Next is to help you create an awareness of the faulty postures and movement patterns you have developed that are creating the pain in the first place. Once you are aware of where you are tight and where you are weak, then you have to assertively pay attention to just how much you cheat because of them. Spending some time working on movement mechanics before jumping into any form of strengthening fitness program is very important because if you don't have the awareness, you will likely get relatively stronger at what you are strong at and relatively weaker at what you are weak at. Once you move well, then add strength and you will prevent a lot of problems.